Hello there and welcome. And if you can't tell already, I am with Love Nest. Hello, Love Nest. Hey, everybody. Hey. And uh, Love Nest has something very large next to him. It's the GCS1 trophy. And I can't think of a better person to launch into a final qualification tournament in this hype video than you, Love Nest. Um, you know, uh, you, you've been on a wild ride. It took you a while to qualify for GCS2. But on that third tournament, you did it in a great style. So congratulations. Thank you very much. Well, it seems that you have some company as well, don't you? And like a nice trophy sitting next to you. That's right. We've we've got another one. Yours looks bigger today. Yours is closer, but uh, it's a pretty decent thing. We've got the GTX 180s behind it that you can stand to win, and um, yeah, it's this this tournament's really starting to shape up now. It's starting to get exciting, Love Nest. And I think it's natural that uh, before we get on to you a little bit and we'll talk about you as a player, let's just talk about GCS2's final qualification tournament and uh, the players that have the possibility to join you in Manchester in September. Right, yeah. So I'm going to go over to um, a, a different screen here, one that shows one of A's favourite things, a spreadsheet. And oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what this spreadsheet represents is it's everybody's possibility to get there on points. And I want to hear from you, Love Nest, a bit of an idea. We've, these are our remaining players. These are the guys kind of left that have a good possibility of qualifying, unless it's some kind of crazy outsider like Crab the Chicken Badoof. But I want to, I, I want your yeah. predictions and just I want your honest opinion. Who's going to win the fourth qualification tournament? Well, well, with heavy heart, I got to say that I've already. Seen that I already see a name which I know won't qualify, and that's Theodosius. He didn't even play in the last um, qualifier. I think he's very busy right now. But um, yeah, I think the top four are like they have a good chance of winning this tournament. But um, I got, I've got a feeling that um, that actually Talisman is going to get out uh, on top and he's gonna win the last qualifier i know he's been training a lot and uh yeah but to be honest like all of these guys have a great chance Von ivan if he if he's um actually playing and not building uh stuff in his base <laughs> yeah it's, it's just like, cool like, back to apart your own... from buildings <laughs> <laughs> buildings are fine but um <laughs> I just went back to structure. the. I just went back to your camera and the face you were pulling, base. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. No, yeah. He says I, I this fourth it. qualification tournament's his. He says it's his. He's been saying that for the past two. In fairness, but uh, if I think he has a great chance, would you say that he might be up against Talisman in the final? Oh uh, yeah, definitely. I would say so. Talisman hasn't played in the last qualifier, but he was very strong in the first. And um, I can I can see them both in the final for sure. Out of these guys, who would be in the third and fourth place playoff, do you think? As a prediction. Uh, it's all we need, a prediction. Prediction. Well, um, I, I think Referro this time. Well, he got kind of unlucky playing against me the last two qualifiers. But I feel like <laughs> I feel like he um, that he is uh, on point and that he will definitely play in the, the semifinals. Okay. Uh, so we'll put him up against who? Who do you reckon is going to make it? I want to do a prediction. I would say I would say Jessalyn. Oh, Just... okay. And uh, who who wins out of those two guys? Hmm. Oh, it's it's tough to say. Kind of like Jessalyn is. Um, just mixed in a little German there. Uh, no idea, to be honest. Like Jessalyn, it kind of depends in like if he's feeling it. Mm. Well, because if he's feeling it, he's definitely going to win it. But uh, I feel like Refero is like doing really? everything to. Um, to qualify yeah i want to so, see him uh, win keeping with your uh your germanic kind of danish connection there oh, no, 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 no 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 i'm looking past race on this one <laughs> okay we'll just this we'll is... just throw everybody else into the quarterfinals if that's okay to uh yeah make uh yeah we'll keep going there we'll put helping hands in the quarterfinals we'll say he gets there this uh, is yeah. what it would look like if all of that crazy stuff happened you'd have um von ivan jesuit Jezulin and Referro qualifying on points. Mm -hmm. Talisman outright. And then these three guys, Aimstrong, Sodolio, and Jay Fajet on the fan vote. Because um, they would finish uh, four, five, and six. All right. Uh, so, yeah, it, it's we, we genuinely have no idea who's going to be joining. Love Nest, Von Aston, and, of course, Devem in the final tournament. Well, not the final tournament. Sorry, GCS2 itself. I mean, people need to get this into this head 
to this point, Loveness, we haven't even actually started GCS2 yet. <laughs> so many tournaments. Like, re it really feels like you've already d done a lot of work, but the, the, the main event is, hasn't even started yet. It's not even started. It's going to be an eight-man tournament. And uh, pleased to announce, we've got a huge announcement to make right now, Loveness. It is going to be double elimination. Awesome. Uh, it's going to be a double, it's like a kind of esports standard double elimination system. Every match will be best of three, and every single player will have chance to uh, make that crazy comeback. I mean, uh, what, what do you think about that? Is that something that's well received by yourself? Well, for somebody who has watched a lot of um, StarCraft II um, World uh, Cyber, no, it was World Cyber Games. Like the the championships, they are always like best uh, with double elimination, and that's always really nice to watch. Like you see a player go down, but he comes back, and eventually he's gonna win that whole thing. And um, I think double elimination for like these live events, and there are like not a lot of them, mm. so. So actually having the chance to to even to play again even if you get knocked out is um is is good and from seeing from from like seeing the past results of uh, the finals the best of 5 they have always been 3-0 so far mm. so um I think I think it's uh, it's a good idea I mean both has have their pros and cons obviously but um I I like this uh, change of setup yeah, I mean, as you were talking there, I took a, that as an opportunity to get the mock-up of what it could look like, a, uh, a, a loser bracket, winner bracket situation. And a key distinction between this and when we tried an OCF is we would have the final match that could possibly happen. So even if the winner bracket guy, Love Nest, made it all the way to the final without losing right. a match, he still gets his chance for double elimination. Every player gets a chance to be eliminated once in a double elimination tournament. That's how it should be uh, played. And uh, that's the the fundamental principle: is everybody gets one more chance. Um, that's fair, yeah. This is very fair, and uh, I think, as you say, it'll just help mostly people that have like nerves on the day. You won't have a situation last year, Love Nest, where you have one guy that is like in the zone and he's <laughs> loving it, and he's drunk on tequila. I'm on about Von Ivan. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> no, of course, I, I meant, uh, you, you know, the Love Nest DevM situation where DevM, for whatever reason, that we don't know you played amazingly, but he was just not in the zone. He couldn't, well, you wouldn't let him play. So <laughs> you never let him settle down. But yeah, uh, I, I guess it's a lot of factors that come into play here. For mm. example, like the issues he had with his computer, then you lost like the first game. and uh, Exactly. And but then, it, like they all led up. But in a series, once you've lost the first few games, you, you're down on your luck and not everybody kind of has the psychology to make it back which you could argue it has its pros and cons but i definitely think with the elimination we remove that for want of a better word excuse there's nobody mm -hmm. that's left saying ah oh, damn i just had one bad match if only i had another chance well with a double elimination tournament we hope to give them that yeah um, so we've talked about a couple of very interesting things now. Um, we've talked about, of course, your predictions for the upcoming event, which is, by the way, going to be cast on Saturday by myself and Tightrope, along with um, many other decent casters on that day. Sweet. I, I'm glad you got uh, Tightrope on board. Yeah, I think he's a perfect uh, guy for me to cast with. I've got, of course, my crazy Ami Poletso Funk-esque energy, and he's very kind of reserved, but in a confident way. It should work well. He's yeah, basically he's some, yeah. <laughs> an oceanic stormless, basically. <laughs> yeah, but I like like his insights and everything. Like um, it's, it's good. I think you guys make a good team. I hope so. I hope so. Uh, of course, Imperial Dane, Dog Eels, and White Flash is going to be joining the fray as well with trucks. So we've got that on Saturday, and then on Sunday, it's going to be me and ICAB, um, who's reliably informed me he's been watching lots of Dota 2 casting to try and get him good at casting in time. But all we want is those juicy insights, so hopefully he can do that. Unless he gets into the semifinals. I haven't prepared for this. Um, we'll call up um, Imperial Dane in that case, probably. Get a commentator on his own gameplay. That would be amazing. <laughs> you know it. Um, so we've discussed a few things. Everybody knows what they w they're going to be watching this weekend. I think uh, Love Ness will just ask you a few questions about your preparations for this live event so we know it's going to be in manchester um how, how do you prepare yourself to defend your throne um well it's important that you get a couple uh, that you get a couple of uh, bodies to to train with but this time it's it's a little bit more tricky because all the good players are actually present at that event mm. so um i personally don't really like uh, 
training with people that you might have to play <laughs> it's, it's just kind of awkward like both of like both players know exactly what the other one is going to do um so yeah you get uh, some people to uh, to play with and um yeah i think this time it's a little bit trickier because you don't know like i don't know when the final seating will be released for the for the live event no clue. I can tell you it's pretty obvious. I mean, we're going to probably put DevM number one seed because 11 0. That, right. you, you can't argue with that. Um, and then I, I genuinely have no idea how we're going to do it. I mean, usually it's just been me sitting there with a spreadsheet, but uh, right. I suppose the idea of double elimination, though, is the seeding will probably be as legit as possible, but at least there's a second chance if it's not quite true to everybody's well, well, taste. The big change um, compared to like. Uh, to GCS one was you knew who you're going to play, so I just knew what what had to be done. Like I went through through all the strategies through my through my card deck and mm. like picked the ones that I needed. But this time it's it's not that clear, and that's like a huge factor for the qualification tourney so far as well. Yeah. That uh, that I just didn't know like who uh, who I'm up against and uh, what works. So I'm glad we actually had these. Yeah, me too. It's going to be really interesting. Uh... To be honest, I think what we'll probably do is do a, like a hardcore analysis of all the games everybody's played in GCS because I don't trust Automatch. Automatch is garbage. So we'll probably right. literally say who's played who, who's beaten who, and we'll work out a system that way. Um, so it's very cool how you're going to prepare. You've got a, a lot of opponents you need to even think about now, which is pretty, pretty interesting. Um, what about the day itself? I mean... Have you, are you all booked up to come and fly into England now? Is it all sorted? I'm just asking uh, as a yet. fan here. I just want to hear as a fan, you know. <laughs> right, right. Uh, not yet. I'm going to, um, I still got to check out if I like fly in a day uh, or two earlier just to to hang out with you guys or uh, to lock myself in and play Company Fears all day. Who knows? <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I'm going to get it sorted out um, soon. It's pretty exciting. If you want to be able to the chance to meet Love Nest, he's a pretty swell guy. You heard it here first. <laughs> um, there are tickets available. We've had a few dropouts. Um, a few dropouts that were also bringing plus one. So we've got around 10 spaces as I live and breathe for the live event. Um, it is open to $150 benefactors first, but we may lower that threshold as we get closer to the event. But I would advise you, if you really want to book a chance, uh, best not to wait. We also have an uh, excellent chance you can win one of the two graphics cards behind me as part of a raffle or the Benefactor tournament, which will be happening in the middle of August. You can check out all dates for this, etc. And any information you need whatsoever about GCS on GCS2.org. And Loveness is a pet peeve of mine when people ask questions that are uh, there. But uh, yeah, it is what it is. Um, Lovenest, it's a pleasure talking to you as always. Um, I'm sure there were so many more questions I could have asked you, especially about the games you've in fact, whilst you've got here, I think we need to talk about some of the matches you had. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to... You can see my screen, right? So I can see your screen, yes. Excellent. So let's go through some of these brackets. And firstly, we're going to take the uh, Barbarossa journey. Mm -hmm. You were number one seed coming in because obviously GCS won champ. It went well. You beat Stuve. And then you faced Talisman. Um, what was it like facing Talisman? And was there anything different about him this year round? Um, well... I kind of screwed up. Like the first, I took the first game, and then the second game I picked Brits, which is not necessarily a bad choice. Um, like I would say, in theory, they work out well, but my execution was very poorly, was very poorly done. Mm. And and then the last game, I was kind of a little bit like, I don't know, like as soon as something doesn't really work for me that well, I'm kind of like not really in there anymore. Like. I feel confident if my plan works out, but this time it didn't. So I played the last game with Oster, a little bit clumsy, and did some uh, did some mistakes. So he definitely deserved to win that series. Um, but I think I took I, I learned my lesson. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you did learn your lesson, of course. And you came back in Citadel. Obviously, with a slightly, uh, <laughs> you see where this is going. <laughs> with a slightly reduced seed, you got knocked down to two, but um, only because you know uh, Von Ivan got did a little bit better than you in that first tournament. Um, and then you got one step further, so you're clearly shaking off the rust at this point, Love Nest. And then you met Von Aston. Mm -hmm. A lot closer this time, you got to that third place game. Um, but what went wrong? What? Why didn't it quite click for you? 
Um, I have you seen? I think you guys casted the third game, right? It mm -hmm. was a hell of a series. There was a lot of back and forth. And uh, I don't know, it, it went into the one hour mark. And there were like, we, I had like 1,000 manpower left and built bunkers everywhere and, yeah. and stuff. Um, I think there was some um, some strategic misplay from my side. Like I, I locked in mobile defense, even though I didn't really have to. And that kind of cost me a lot of late game options. And um, that's what that's why I lost the the last game. Like an SU eighty five with T seventy vision on crossroads in the center, it's just a tough nut to crack. And if you just if you're just busy in base repairing all your tanks, then um, yeah, I, I think I learned a valuable lesson from that thing as well. So I um, I uh, I read the books again and uh, went back <laughs> to the drawing board and uh, started anew. You did. Uh, you absolutely did. I was trying to find the match on YouTube, then I failed miserably, but never mind. Um, you did, absolutely. And that brings you to, of course, your uh, crowning achievement for this year, at least. After when... everybody was left, uh, was, was gone already. <laughs> yeah, after we <laughs> removed a couple of players. You came up against uh, Referro. You beat Kimbo in a great series, by the way. Computer uh, normal, yeah. <laughs> and then... <Right. laughs> and then... You came up against an arch rival in a best of five, and you know it didn't even look hard after that first game. You know you just went into overdrive. What was it like? Did you did you you know get back to your hundred percent level that you needed to get to? I would I, I would say so. Like I like from the start of this tournament, I know exactly what I had to be done. Like I. I kind of kind of rounded like every edge that I had, like every uh, every corner, if that mm. makes sense. Like I, I kind of refined my strategies to a point where I felt really comfortable with them. And uh, yeah, like the first game against Jessalyn went went really well, and I kind of felt like that Jessalyn uh, lost a little bit of his motivation as we played. Um, but yeah, I, I, I felt good. I had a lot of fun playing these these games. And uh, playing against Jessalyn is always is always a pleasure. You just I, I really like the joke that you did. Like, hey, Stormless, what year is it? <laughs> <laughs> and, and then he was like, uh, do you want me to say what uh, what is like obvious? Or <laughs> <laughs> he always gets my jokes, that guy. <laughs> he, he he didn't really get it, did he? <laughs> no. And you always, you're the only person in chat I can always guarantee gets my at times terrible jokes and you're always egging me on you're really <laughs> bad <laughs> you're really bad for that um yeah that was hilarious i love it i, I loved danny's reaction though <laughs> like, yeah it's like so innocent <laughs> <laughs> right so uh but yeah playing against Justin is it's just just nice and um kind of kind of gets you a little bit sentimental as well like how many times you already played each other uh it's it's nice it really is <laughs> yeah it's nice for people that have been watching the new guys are like oh my god who are these two players playing and you're like this is the 100th time i've played him in a tournament <laughs> um but <laughs> right. uh indeed it was very cool i think um we've, we've talked about a lot here love nest we've hyped up the tournament is there any final closing words you have for the people that are trying to play for the right to beat you this weekend um yeah sure um if, if if you guys just take a look at the the results page uh, on gcs2.org you can see like there's a good chance that you can still qualify for the tournament and um i really want to see like especially the people from like referro and below like to do what they uh like to play their best and like get into those top four and uh maybe qualify it would be just so nice to see um <laughs> Yeah, oh Theo, poor poor Theo, but uh, oh man, yeah, yeah, but I feel, really feel like Referosh is is the one who's going to uh, qualify yes, either with points. Yes, I don't yes, think he will he will win the whole thing, but uh, I think he will have, it will be enough for for a uh, qualification with points. Pretty exciting stuff. Um, and Love Nest, I have to say, I mean, I know you were being genuine then, but you sounded. <laughs> A little bit like in a funny way, quite patronizing. You were like, uh, <laughs> "Listen, guys, if you play really hard, you can qualify on points, and you might get chance to meet me in September. <laughs> well, and I will destroy you and win another trophy. It's gonna be fine. You're gonna love it. I'll even sign your your uh, ticket or something." <laughs> right? Yeah. No, no. I was just like, j just give give the the organization team some time and maybe there will be a few more uh, uh, bands and uh, 
and stuff and uh, maybe you will go up like automatically you don't even have to do much <laughs> no but seriously though like with with the uh, with the standings as they are right now there's some um, there's everything possible anything's possible and that's right you're gonna have to tune in this weekend to see it um it's gonna be awesome thank you everybody for tuning into this video and thank you loveness for the interview thank you very much goodbye <laughs>